Hello everyone, this is Grace. It is May the 2nd, 2022, and we are continuing our our study on the Sabbath day. We looked at the scriptures, um, the major scriptures which the Bible provided us, and we looked at the definitions that were provided through those scriptures. And now we're going to take a look at some of the examples of things that were done on the Sabbath day in order to discern what qualifies as something that you can do versus things that are considered um, breaking the Sabbath or um, defiling the Sabbath in some way. So we're going to start with John verse five, John chapter 5 verse 2. And we are still discussing work in this particular video. So we're looking at the scriptures and the examples that pertaining to working on the Sabbath. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. Um, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. So we see... <laughs> that taking up something and carrying it from here to there or doing something to here's the thing if we were to read down further we will see here we go it's actually i actually marked it and therefore did the jews persecute jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the sabbath but jesus answered unto them my father worketh hitherto and i worketh and i work See, and so he's saying he worked on the Sabbath, <laughs> but he does not accuse this man of working. He doesn't do that. The Sadducees, the Pharisees, accused him, accused the man of working, and they accused Jesus because they told him to, because he's the one that told him to do it. They told him he could not carry his mat. The Jews therefore said unto him, that was cured it is the sabbath day it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed and jesus said it was lawful it was perfectly fine for him to carry his bed on the sabbath so if you want to carry stuff on the sabbath there's no problem now herein lies the problem how much weight can you carry <laughs> and why do i say this i say this because we have learned to put restriction upon restriction upon restriction upon restriction upon ourselves we this is what we this is what we've been taught in regards to the sabbath that god is this dictator just hovering over you just waiting to catch you doing something wrong so he could point his finger at you on the sabbath day that's not true <laughs> if you want to put a weight on something put a weight on something i'm not i can't stop you but that's not what the Bible does. And if you're going to say it's okay to carry a mat, then it's okay to carry something heavy. This is what the Bible teaches. If he can carry his bed, then he can carry something else. <laughs> the, the Pharisees have a limit on what could be carried. If you want to carry a jar from the table to the countertop, okay. You can carry a plate from the, from the countertop to the table. You're good. But the Pharisees had all these limitations that they had put on the people. And none of them were, well, <laughs> the ones that Jesus contested, they simply weren't valid. <laughs> and he was trying to teach the people that they didn't have to abide, abide by all of these restrictions. So if you want to restrict yourselves, you can carry this, but you can't carry that. Go ahead. But there's no such restrictions in the Bible. If he can carry the bed... And Jesus didn't say, it's only a bed. It's super light. He can carry the bed. <laughs> if he didn't give an example saying, if he, um, he carried a bed and it's different than carrying a heavy load, then you can't say there's a difference. There are no examples to distinguish this bed from anything else. All Jesus said was, I work, God works. <laughs> why can't this man carry his bed <laughs> why can't he carry that bed 
he needs to pick up his bed and go on about his business. That's all he said. No restrictions were put on this. And that's the way I'm going to take it. No restrictions on weight. Do what you need to do in order to live through your day. Don't restrict yourself in that area. The Bible doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Let's go on to the next example. And therefore, oh, okay, let's continue on. No restrictions on weight and no restrictions on duty. All of that stuff is things that we made up in our head because nobody told us what to do. We didn't have the we didn't have the Pharisees to say this is allowed and this isn't allowed. And we were so frightened that we were going to do it wrong and we want to do right because we love the Lord. <laughs> I remember oh, man when I first started to keep the Passover, I remember I went online and I printed out this list of stuff that needed to be, that had yeast in it. And it was like a book. <laughs> and, I, and I wouldn't even, it was so big and the, the print, I mean it had so many things listed. I didn't even look at it until like a couple of days before the Sabbath. <laughs> a couple of days before the Passover. And I looked at it and I breezed through it. And I just did, remember standing there in front of my cabinet. And I picked up one can. I, look, I picked up another can and I looked at it and I was like, this is not right. This can't, this can't be right. I, I ended up doing pretty much... A, I did none of that stuff, by the way. But I did remember I threw away my bread machine, my bread maker. I was like, yeah, I'm never going to get this thing clean. I threw it away. And to this day, I regret that. <laughs> I regret it. None of that stuff was necessary. No, it, it's spiritual. The Pharisees were trying to abide by the written law. Hold on. The Pharisees were trying to abide by the written law. And we know that they got it wrong. And not only that, even if they hadn't got it wrong, we know that when they got it wrong, if they had kept the law, they still got it wrong. And now we abide by the spiritual meaning. <laughs> I eat bread on the Passover. It's just not, it, it just doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. So let's go on. And he said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, he will not lay hold of it and lift it out? None. We would all do this. What if your what if your son falls and he hurts himself? Are you gonna lift him up? Two hundred and fifty pound man? Or is it too much of a load for you? This just not oh well that's a good deed. That's a good. This is a good deed. It could fall under a good deed. You can find excuses to do what you want to do when you want to do it, I suppose. But you need not find an excuse because there's no law against it. There's no law against any of this stuff. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation and they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done unto him done to him and the lord said unto moses this man shall surely be put to death all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp okay i missed i must have missed the verse in exodus 16 because oh here i have it here we're going to have to go back one but that's okay so let's read through ex deuteronomy 16 not exodus 16 But at the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name in, there thou shalt sacrifice the Passover and even at the going down of the sun at the season that thou camest forth out of Egypt. And thou shalt roast and eat it in its place which the Lord thy God shall choose. And thou shalt turn in the morning and go into thy tents six days. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread. And on the seventh day shall be a solemn assembly to the Lord thy God. Thou shalt do no work therein. Um, let's read through all of this. Um, wait a minute. No, no, no. 
Let's read the next verses that I have highlighted. I think I have it. Um, no. We'll read until I find the verses that I need to show you in order to do the proper comparison. And in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord, and in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten, and the first day shall be in holy convocation. You shall do no manner of servile work therein. I'm not sure why I put it in this order. I wish I could remember why. Here we are. So let's. No, this isn't it either. Let's just read what I have highlighted. And in the first day there should be a holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, and that only may be done of you. Here we are. This is it. Okay. I thought I was going to have to pause you again. So, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate each day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And then, of course, there was the murmurings and the the meat that came in. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man. According to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. And this is what they did. A, a miracle happened here. They were told to gather of it every man according to his eating, and omer for every man. And if they did this, let's read on. And the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an omer, he that gathered much had nothing over. And he that gathered little had no lack. So they gathered every man according to his eating. So, if they followed instructions, and they gathered an omer for every man, or at least they, they thought they did, right? So, if they gathered an omer for each man, then what they would find is that the, at the end of the day, they never had anything left over. He that had gathered a little bit too much, they or if they they needed more, they had more. If they needed less, they had less. But if they tried to meet that command, they would never have any left over. They gathered every man according to his eating. And that was the miracle that had happened. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it until the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning, and a bread warms and stank, and Moses was wrought with them. And they gathered every morning, every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melt. And it came to pass that on the sixth day they gathered twice as much bread, two omers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. So here's what was going on. They were gathering an omer for every man. So, when it came to the sixth day, they gathered an omer for every man, but they had twice as much as what they needed. Remember now, if they met with an omer, they had nothing left over, and they had no lack. So here they gather on the sixth day, and they have twice as much as what they need. Two omers for one man. And all the rulers of the congregation came and said, Moses, <laughs> what's going on here? We gathered an omer for each man as you told us, but now we have two. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord has said, Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seed that which ye will seed, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worms therein. So we're going to jump down here. And it came to pass as they went out, some of them, some of the people on the seventh day to gather, and they found none. 
So even though they weren't supposed to gather on the seventh day, some of them went out to gather anyway. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep the commandments, to keep my keep my commandments and my laws? See for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath thereof. He has given you on the sixth day the bread for two days. And the command is, Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. I want to give you a scenario. <laughs> so here is the scenario, and it kind of covers a lot of the topics. I should have given it to you in the last video, but I, I forgot. So the scenario is this. You need, a friend of mine needs, say, $20,000. <laughs> And so I loan him $20,000 for a business or whatever he's going to start. But I know that he's not going to, well, I wouldn't do this because you're not supposed to do this legally. But it's just for the example. <laughs> but I know he's still going to be broke after he gets the $20,000. So I say, well, since you, he's supposed to pay me $200 a month until he pays me the $20,000 back. And I say, well, as a good faith gesture... <laughs> If you can't pay me the $200 a month, then you can come and clean my house for um, on Monday, so that month. So the contract is going to be, I'm going to loan you $20,000, you're going to pay me $200 a month. The exception is going to be, if you can't pay me the $200 a month, you can come clean my house on Mondays. So the work, of course, is going to be, the the actual contract is the Leviticus 23. And the exception is going to be um, Moses. <laughs> Moses is the exception. See, because they didn't have work then. <laughs> they didn't have work. They had gathering. They went out to gather their food. They weren't out there plowing the land. They were walking around that mountain for 40 years. So they weren't out there sowing seeds and, and planting the land. But they still needed that law. They still needed to know what could and could not be done. So he doesn't say to them, don't work. Don't go out and gather food. Don't do this. He just says to them, abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. It's a day of rest. So the people rested on the seventh day. They didn't go out gathering food. And they knew what that meant. Okay, so now we're going to go back to that scripture that I... Way, way back here in Numbers 15. So... And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks on the Sabbath day. And they, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses, Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done. And the Lord said unto Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Let's look at a couple of things here. We're going to go back and we're going to read some. Well, let's read first. Let's start from... We're going to start. Let's start from 17. Speaking to the children of Israel and say unto them, When you come into the land whither I bring you, then it shall be that when you eat of the bread of the land, you shall offer up an heave offering unto the Lord. You shall offer up a cake of the first year of your dough for an heave offering, as ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye heave it. Let's see. Let's just read because I'm not really sure. And if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments which the Lord has spoken unto Moses, even all that the Lord has commanded you by the hand of Moses, from the day that the Lord commanded Moses and henceforth among your generations, then it shall be if you ought if ought by then it shall be if ought be committed by ignorance, which we know 
if you are um, if you're serving the Lord all sins are committed in ignorance because if you had the power to do right you would do right so all sins would be committed in ignorance without the knowledge of the congregation that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering when well, doesn't have to be done by the entire congregation I meant on an individual level um, that <laughs> where did I leave off that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner and one kid of the goats for a sin offering and the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel and it shall be forgiven them for it is ignorance and they shall bring their offering a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord and their sin offering before the Lord for their ignorance and it shall be the, shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel and the strange of Esther joined among them seeing all the people were in ignorance and if any soul sin through ignorance then he shall bring a she goat in the first year for a sin offering and the priests shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly when he sinneth by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him and it shall be forgiven him so we're speaking of offerings sin offerings mistakes that are made things that um and and how you would make it right with how you would um the offerings that you would make to the lord when you sin in ignorance you shall have one law for him that sinned through ignorance both for him that is born among the children of israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among him but the soul that doeth aught presumptuously whether he be born in the land or a stranger the same reproacheth the same reproaches the Lord the same reproaches the Lord and that soul shall be cut off from among his people because he has despised the word of the Lord and has broken his commandment that soul shall be utterly cut off his iniquity shall be upon him and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day and they found him gathering sticks and brought him unto Moses and Aaron unto all the congregation it's not a coincidence that he was gathering sticks because they gathered it's a different word they but they gathered or picked up or um, um what is it called i can't recall where they gathered food or whatever um they gathered the manna and they found him gathering sticks and brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation and they put him inward because it was not declared what should be done unto him and the Lord said unto Moses this man shall surely be put to death all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp this man was this up here in the if we go back to where we to Deuteronomy 16 or Exodus 16 Exodus 16 and it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather and they found none and the Lord said unto Moses how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws see for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath therefore he giveth he giveth you on the sixth day the bread for two days. Abide ye every man in your place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. They were still picking up bread on the Sabbath. Nobody was killed. However, when we go back here, this guy is gathering bread. But by then they all know the rules. So when gathering sticks. So when they see him gathering sticks, the men say, hey, wait a second. We're not supposed to be doing that. They're all out having resting, having fun, sitting on their sitting lounging out in front of their tents. <laughs> and they found when they saw him gathering sticks, they they got him. <laughs> and they took him to Moses and said, Look, nobody's doing this anymore. What are we supposed to do with this guy who started presumptuously? There's no manna to gather. So he presumptuously goes out and instead of gathering manna, he starts gathering sticks. For what? We don't need to know what. The Bible doesn't tell us what. There's a reason why we don't know. Because it has nothing to do with what he was gathering them for. We don't know if he was going to cook. We don't know if he was going to heat up his house. We have no idea. It doesn't matter. 
The point is, the Lord told them to stay in their tents. He he has no manna to gather, so what does he do? He just goes out and starts working and gathering up sticks. <laughs> so they put him inward because they knew it was wrong and it was not but nobody else had been doing it. So it was not declared what should be done. They had learned it was wrong to do this on the Sabbath. This has to be in here. You have to understand, in the beginning they weren't punished because they had to learn. Now they know to do better. And so they see this guy gathering sticks. They bring him in and say, Moses, what are we supposed to do? He had to be put to death. Why did he have to be put to death? Because he despised the word of the Lord and had broken the commandments. And that soul had to be cut off. His iniquity was upon him. The soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from among his people. It's purely in context with the rest of this. It's nowhere else. It's I mean, this is that's why it's here. Because gathering sticks, if you have an emergency, is not a crime. <laughs> There's no need that you can't gather sticks. It's not work. Unless it's a burden. I mean, if you put some burden upon yourself, it can be work. Anything can be work. Anything can be a burden. But we don't know why he was gathering sticks. You're putting your your you're putting stuff in here that doesn't need to be added in order to get the context of the statement. The fact is, is that he is doing work presumptuously because he despised the word of the Lord. So let's go on. Oh, I put this scripture in here for burden. Uh, let's read it. Thus said the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it into the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day. Neither do ye any work, but hollow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your father. So we have to skip through a few of these. We read that. We read Exodus 16. Hold on. Okay, I think that's it, actually. Yep, that's it for work. And so we will close that out here, and I will see you in the next video.